They're off. All coming away to a good start. And welcome to our brand new edition of Mammoth Racing Today. I'm your host, Mike Kersey. Big show coming up. We'll talk with Jersey Joe Bravo, the 13-time riding champ, getting win number 5,000 last weekend. We'll also catch up with one of the hottest trainers on the grounds in Derek Ryan. He had four winners on the weekend. And track announcer Frank Miramati will tell us about his career coming up a bit later on. Right now, though, some spot plays for this weekend. Saturday in race three, number six, first dibs, the park shipper who could rally into this owns tactical speed. In the seventh, the four, Fiesta Rose won by eight last time, could look to repeat. In the 11th, the J.J. Riley, number six, Saucy Don has five wins here, was second in last year's Riley. Coming up, Joe Bravo talks about win number 5,000 next on Mammoth Racing Today. Mammoth Park's got the sand, tasty food, plus plenty for the kids to enjoy. And of course, there's always great racing. Vacation for a day at Monmouth Park. Alongside Jersey Joe Bravo, and I tell you what, number 5,000, it came around in a big race, a patented Joe Bravo turf ride. How did it feel to get that big win? Uh, it was really great. I mean, <laughs> The crowd around me really all month long has been just 498, 499, 5,000. When are you going to get it done? So uh, it's just nice to do it here at home, to be honest. I don't care if it was number one or number 10,000. It's just nice to be here every day. Look at Moff Park and be part of it and to be able to be here. And just look at every fan that walks by. I know him for 20 years. It's pretty cool. Um, that's what makes it so special. When you started race riding, could you ever imagine being one of the 31 all-time to reach this coveted milestone. <laughs> I would have to be lying to you if I said, yeah, come on. <laughs> when you start out, you just want to go out there and do it. You don't care about winning a race or anything. You just can't wait to do it. Then you start winning races, and you get, man, that's fun. Then you start winning every race. Then you start, I want the bigger races. And at this point in my career, I'm just loving going out there and competing every day. Win, lose, it's awesome to deal with the horses because you never really know what to expect. The next one could take you to the Derby, and that's what we're dreaming about. No question. And uh, also, you had Red Vine last week. Well, I tell you what, that horse really looked good for Christophe Clement. Tell me about that race. Yeah, he's a pretty special horse. I rode him a while back on the turf, and, man, he's just got bigger and stronger since then. And he loves to sit in the pocket, and trust me, when you ask him down the lane, he'll run. And, man, all I had to do was show him the other horse, and he really got up underneath to be nice. He's got a good future. Biggest win for you, at least in your mind, over your 5,001 wins? Uh, you know, Mike, that's such a general question. I, I, I've won the Woodford Reserve with uh, Little Mike the race before the Derby, and I always thought, man, that's going to be the closest I ever get to winning the Kentucky Derby. And then I come back to run third in it and then winning the Haskell and winning my first grade one of formal gold. Boss, I'm just happy to be out here fighting every day, uh, so everyone is good. Right now, let's go back to 1974. Hall of Famer Ruffian wins the sorority. They round the turn, and Ruffian still holds a half-length lead on the outside, hot and nasty second. It's a two-horse race as they pass the quarter pole. Ruffian on the inside, hot and nasty on the outside, going stride for stride. Dream across now moves up third with Weaver of Irish Force. Turning for home, it's hot and nasty on the outside. Ruffian along the rail, still going stride for stride with Ruffian now moving out by half a length. It's a two-horse race down the stretch on the inside. Ruffian has the lead on the outside, hot and nasty. Some days you just need to get away. <sighs> So get away at Monmouth Park. Everyone's Irish for the day at the 45th Annual Irish Festival, Sunday, June 7th. Vacation for a day at Monmouth Park. Welcome back to Monmouth Racing today alongside trainer Derek Ryan. Quite a weekend this past weekend with four winners, three on Saturday, one on Monday. And uh, a, a really good start to the meet for you. Tell us about it. Yeah, it's been a real good start. Um, you, you always like to get off to a good start at your home track. And uh, we sort of aim for it every year and it worked out really good. Start the summer off. Tell us a little bit about uh, some of the winners on Saturday. You had uh, I'm a Handsome Man, 
uh, by Musket Man, who you trained to a couple of third place finishes in the classics. Um, what was uh, what was that like? Uh, he's he's actually very similar to Musket Man. He was I bought him off actually the same guy as I bought Musket off of, and uh, he was ready to run last fall. We got to Florida, and he got bit by a bug or something in his hind leg, and we had a he was at the clinic for like two months and uh, finally got him back. And I, and I was very confident going long. You know, I was waiting to run him long all, all the time. And Danny says, as soon as he goes long, he'll be fine. So. And then you hit with a 23 to one shot named Corrals. Was on the turf for the first start, came back six days later on the main track and blew up the tote board at 48 bucks. Yeah, he, um, he didn't really take to the turf and um, he came out of it really good. And uh, he wheeled him right back, told Danny to be a little aggressive out at the gate and make sure he was in the race, and uh, it worked out very good. Did you expect that kind of effort on short rest to come back and, and race I, the way he did? I expected him to run really good. I was afraid of the favorite, the Wayne Catalano's horse, and uh, but it worked out. What else do you have uh, in the barn coming up for us this summer? Um, I got a couple of jersey breads from Mrs. Sessa that um, are going to be all right. Two, two, I got a three-year-old colt that hasn't run yet came and can it looks like he might be all right and uh, i got a real nice two-year-old filly from stoner street by uh out of a filly that everyone in the jersey shore will know wild gams by tap it so i'm hopefully she turns out to be something special you got a name for that one she's not named yet so no. i haven't a clue who, what they're going to call all right, it. let me know we'll share it with everybody on mammoth racing today so we'll keep an eye out for it okay do all right derek ryan off to a great start of mammoth as always thanks for joining us more to come New for the summer is the Frozen Furlong Bar, offering frozen drinks for both kids and adults. Located in the picnic area, enjoy pina coladas, margaritas, strawberry daiquiris, and don't forget to try the Mango Madness. And also check out the $2.50 draft beer special every racing day at the Frozen Furlong Bar in the picnic area at beautiful Mammoth Park. Welcome back to Mammoth Racing Today. Mike Kersey alongside our new track announcer, Frank Miramati, who you know from Oak Lawn and other racetracks uh, over the years, and of course TVG as well. Great to have you here. How's the start been for you? I really love it here. You know, obviously Mammoth Park is a beautiful venue, a lot of history here, but you never know until you get to a place how you're going to feel. And uh, it couldn't be more beautiful. You know, you always hear about the Jersey Shore on TVG. And to live here and to be a part of this is just uh, spectacular. It really is. How did it all start for you? What got you into race announcing, Frank? You know, my dad was uh, a guy that would go to the track. He wasn't really a, a true horse fan. May he rest in peace. He liked to bet a little bit here and there. And uh, he would take us to the track as young kids. And I learned how to imitate voices at a very young age. And since we were at the track so often, I started imitating track announcers. And I actually really loved the racing you know, I don't remember the first time I was at the track because I was in diapers, but uh, I can tell you that by the time I was nine, I was completely into the game because when he wouldn't take me to see Seattle Slough in the swap stakes, I was a devastated young man. It was too crowded for him to want to fight all that, and I remember listening to that race on the radio, and from that time, it was just really, when you talk about sports, kids like baseball, football, I loved horse racing. Is there one race in your announcing career that you can look back on and you have fond memories of? You say, boy, that was... That was some race. There was uh, one in particular at Churchill Downs. I was invited to All-Star Announcers Day in 2000. It was the day before Tiz Now, who I had called in the, in the Super Derby, was to win the first of his two Breeders' Cup Classics. And that day, they let me call two races, one as myself, and the last race of the day, I called as everybody who participated. And I think to me, that was uh, just, just to, because that was my first visit ever to Churchill, that was a moment that I'll never forget. Great to have you here at Mammoth, and we look forward to hearing your race calls uh, all year long. Frank Miramati here on Mammoth Racing Today. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Mike. I appreciate everyone welcoming me with open arms. More to come here. Stay with us. Some days you just need to get away. <sighs> so get away at Mammoth Park. Everyone's Irish for the day at the 45th Annual Irish Festival, Sunday, June 7th. Vacation for a day at Monmouth Park. And that'll put a wrap on this week's edition of Mammoth Racing Today. We hope to see you at the races. They're off. All coming away to a good start.